Hello everybody and welcome back. Here we are now doing another example of a single population uh, proportion or a test on a single population proportion. Now, once again, I want to reiterate every now and again, I want to remind people that the process of hypothesis testing here is very, very, very similar from the very beginning of module nine all the way through really until we get into module 14. You're going to see a lot of similarities. Part of the problem with that is, of course, that students tend to get into a routine. You get into a bit of a habit of, of going through the step-by-step-by-step -step -step process of hypothesis testing. And the danger to that is that you can very easily skip over some of the really important small little differences as we go through the different types of tests. So it can be handy to, to become an expert in that process and take advantage of all of the similarities that exist in all of the tests, but don't overlook the small little differences because those small little differences are so important. It's a difference between getting them right or wrong. So let's go through this exercise. Uh, again, here it's telling us a single population proportion. It's telling us a two-tailed test. Well, on an exam or an assignment or something, you probably don't have that information. So let's make sure we can see how to get that information from the problem. It has been argued that drunk drivers cause 50% of fatal accidents on the nation's highways. In order to test this claim, you obtain the following information. So here I have that out of the last 120 accidents in our state, we find 72 of them were caused by drunk driving. So step one, formulate your test. So this always, well, this is always step one. I should take that back. There's actually a step one that happens before this, and that's identifying what are we testing? Means, proportions, later on, standard deviations, variances, one population, two population. Step one is really, what am I testing? Step two is then formulate the appropriate test. So when I look at this data, at this problem, well, I can see that it's describing a proportion. It's saying out of 120, 72 met that criteria. Whatever that criteria is that we're testing, in this case, we're testing the proportion of drunk drivers. So it, it's a yes or no. And out of those 120, uh, 72 of them, yes, were caused by drunk driving. The remainder were no, not by drunk driving. So here, just by looking at that data, I can see 72 out of the 120. So that's telling me that I'm testing a proportion. Now, I can see what my hypothesized value is as well, because we're testing a claim. It says we're testing a claim, and that claim is that 50% of those accidents are caused by drunk driving. So it's not more than, less than, at least 50%. It's just the claim is simply that it is 50%. And I always like to write these as decimals just because then it's consistent with how the numbers are going to be input uh, to the formulas. So I'll write that as a decimal. You really can write it as 50%. That's perfectly fine too, but that's just a preference. For me, I put it in decimals. So we're doing a two-tailed test, and so this becomes not 0.5. Okay, so again, by looking at the problem, here I can see... 72 out of 120, that's telling me I'm doing a test on proportions. And I know it's a two-tail test because we're testing a claim that drunk drivers cause 50%. It is or it is not. It's not greater than, less than, at least. Okay, it either is or it isn't. So that makes it a two-tail test. So my justification here then is that, well, we formulated it like this so that if the evidence supports the null hypotheses, well, then I have evidence to support that claim that has been made. If our evidence supports the alternative hypothesis, well, then we would not be able to support that claim. Then we have evidence to show that, no, it's not 50%. It's something other than 50% of the accidents are caused by drunk drivers. Okay, we'll do this test at 0.5 level of significance. Next step, 
is our test statistic. It's the same process as all of the other um, tests that we've done. We're doing a test on proportions. I'm going to use the Z distribution. And so here's what that formula looks like. Oops, there's a mistake. We are using in that standard error, again, we operate under the assumption that the null is true unless we have evidence to show otherwise. And so in that standard error and that test statistic, we see I'm using the hypothesized value, right? There's the assumption that the null is true. Okay, well, next step, we'll just put in our numbers. So 72, let's see, I have 72 out of 120, that's equal to 0.6. So here I'll have 0.6 minus 0.5. And here I have to make sure this is, again, just a really easy spot to make a mistake is putting the wrong proportion in here. I'm using the hypothesized value divided by my sample size. Really easy mistake again is using the wrong value using 72 when it's supposed to be 120, right? Not using that one. This is our sample size here, n is 120. So this gives me, let's see, 0 0.5, 0.5 divided by 120. Oh, there's a mistake. 0.5, 0.5. That gives me 2.19 as my test statistic. Once more, p-value approach, critical value approach. We're using the z-tables, so really I'm gonna be able to get a precise p-value. So I'm gonna scroll down, hopefully I have some tables here. They're messy from some other problem. And I'm looking for 2.19, well here's 2.1. And yes, I'm looking at the negative value, but again, I'm taking advantage of the symmetry uh, of this problem. Uh, and again, we're doing a two-tailed test, so I could be on either side of that distribution. That doesn't really make any difference. 2.19, there we go. Here's that probability, 0 0.0143. And so, of course, Something very common that I would see students do is say, okay, my p-value is 0 0.0143. What's the problem here? Again, this is a consequence of getting into a routine, getting into a habit. Okay, formulate the test, calculate the test statistic, go to my tables, find a probability. You know, when you're doing the hypothesis test, there's three different types of tests, right? There's lower tail, two tail, and upper tail test. And so often when students are doing practice problems, well, two out of the three types of tests are one tail test. So two out of three times, that might be the correct p-value because that's what it would be if it were a one tail test. So because the majority of tests that students might be doing when they're practicing may be one tail test, it's easy to forget about that third test that is a two-tailed test that requires us to multiply that by two. So my p-value here is 286. That's my p-value for a two-tailed test. And again, that's that step that is just a little bit different because it's a two-tailed test and it's really easy for students to overlook that. If I was doing a critical value approach, alpha is 05, so this would be my Z.025. Uh, we can look that up, although this is a fairly common one. Uh, 0.025 is right, oh, I just lost it, right here. So that's two tail test, so it's gonna be plus or minus 1.025. 9, 6, right? That's where those two come together. And so again, that um, gives us our value here, plus minus 1.96. Now, both of these approaches 
Now here's my critical value on both sides, negative 196, positive 196. We would reject on either side of those. We do not reject in the middle. And well, here we have that test statistic is 2.19. We can see using that critical value approach that we would reject. That test statistic is larger than that upper tail critical value. And consequently, if that critical value uh, here, 1.96, if that leads us to a rejection, well, you better believe that the p-value approach is also going to bring us to that same conclusion. And so here we are, we see that p-value is 0 0.0286, that's less than our level of significance. So we do have sufficient evidence here to reject the null hypotheses. So what does that mean? Well, we have evidence here to show that um, we can refute that claim. We have evidence to show that it is not 50% uh, of, of accidents are caused by drunk driving. Good. So that's it. That's all there is to it. That's our two-tailed test on a single population proportion. It goes a little bit faster now because we understand, hopefully, we know that process step-by-step step hasn't changed. Okay, guys, thank you for watching.